Hi there! Welcome back to Episode 3 of TPRA's Third Party Risk Management 101 series, a guide for creating and enhancing your third party risk management program. New to the series? Take a look at our first two episodes, What is Third Party Risk Management? and Program Planning and Oversight. These videos will help you better understand the foundations of building a third party risk management program. Today, we will be discussing the third phase of the TPRM lifecycle, the contract review phase. Contract review is an essential step in the TPRM process, as it ensures organizations document relationship expectations in an agreement that can be upheld in a court of law. It also ensures risks noted within the due diligence process can be addressed within contractual clauses. TPRM practitioners should work closely with legal counsel to ensure that contractual language is clear, specific, and enforceable. They should also ensure that the contract includes appropriate remedies in the event that the third party fails to meet its obligations under the agreement. Finally, TPRM practitioners should review the contract regularly to ensure that it remains current and reflective of the organization's risk tolerance. In this section, we will review the following activities to assist with executing comprehensive third-party contracts. 1. The contract review process. 2. Contract clauses and template agreements. And 3. Negotiation techniques. Section 1. Contract review process. It is important for TPRM practitioners to have a seat at the table when reviewing contracts. Third-party contracts typically involve clauses related to cybersecurity, data protection, regulatory compliance, and other risk areas that are critical to protecting the organization. By having a seat at the table, practitioners can provide valuable insight and guidance as subject matter experts on these topics. TPRM practitioners are responsible for proactively identifying and mitigating risks associated with their organization's third parties. Therefore, by reviewing contract clauses, practitioners can identify potential risks in cybersecurity-related clauses before they impact the organization, as well as work towards mitigating identified risks. TPRM practitioners may also want to review red lines within specific clauses that relate to cybersecurity terms, as well as terms that would allow a practitioner to perform his or her duties such as a right to audit or review, and or termination clause. These will ensure any changes made to these clauses remain in line with the organization's risk appetite and control expectations. Practitioners can also ensure any high-risk findings discovered during the pre-contract due diligence process are noted within contractual terms. It is important to perform due diligence activities before a contract is signed. In doing so, companies can identify potential risks related to the third party's financial stability, legal and regulatory compliance, reputation, cybersecurity intelligence, and other relevant factors. These can help companies make informed decisions about whether to enter into a contract with the third party and what contractual terms and conditions should be included to mitigate risks. Contracts should be reviewed on a regular cadence to confirm they remain in line with your organization's risk appetite as well as reflect any emerging risks that have been identified. If changes need to be made to bring contracts in line with current standards, then an amendment should be considered. Contract changes could also be made during the renewal process. It is important to have a clear and comprehensive contract in place at the beginning of the relationship to avoid misunderstandings and disputes later on. However, if changes need to be made to the contract, they should be made in a timely and transparent manner. The contract should include provisions for how changes will be made and how they will be communicated to all parties involved. The party should negotiate the changes in good faith and reach an agreement that is fair and reasonable to all parties. Section 2. 
contract clauses and template agreements. Contract templates provide a standardized and reliable way to create legally binding agreements between parties. These templates serve as a starting point for negotiations and outline the terms and conditions that will govern the relationship between the parties involved. Using a contract template can save time and money because it eliminates the need to create a contract from scratch each time a new agreement is needed. It also ensures that all of the necessary provisions are included in the contract, ensuring consistency with legal requirements and industry best practices. There are a variety of contract templates that can be created. The most common is the Master Services Agreement, or MSA. This template agreement includes important clauses that are beneficial to TPRM practitioners, such as the right to review, dispute resolution, termination, confidentiality, cyber insurance, and intellectual property clauses. Clauses that address the relationship should remain in the MSA and not in a service level agreement, such as a statement of work, or SOW. To ensure it lives on after an SOW has expired, and or termed. Another agreement is a cybersecurity and or information security addendum. This template agreement should cover critical security requirements, material subcontractors, incident response and notification requirements, and non-compliance triggers, such as performing an on-site when a third party is not making cadence with high-risk remediation efforts. A cybersecurity addendum may include clauses such as, but not limited to, confidentiality and data protection. This clause should address how the parties will handle and protect confidential information, including personal data. It should specify how the third party will safeguard data based on specified data classification types. It may also include provisions for data breach notification and response. Access controls and authentication. This clause should outline the access controls and authentication mechanisms that the parties will use to ensure that only authorized individuals can access systems and or data. It may also include requirements for multi-factor authentication and password policies. System monitoring and logging. This clause should address how the third party will monitor and log system activity to detect and respond to security incidents. It may include requirements for regular audits and the use of security information and event management, or SIEM, tools. Incident Response and Business Continuity This clause should outline the third party's response to security incidents and how they will ensure business continuity. It should include provisions for incident reporting, investigation, and resolution, as well as disaster recovery and business continuity planning and testing. Third-party security. This clause should address the security of any third-party system and or service used in the contract. It may include requirements for third-party due diligence activities and security requirements for material subcontractors. Compliance with laws and regulations. This clause should address the third party's compliance with applicable laws and regulations, including data protection and privacy laws, such as GDPR, HIPAA, and PCI DSS, cybersecurity regulations, and industry standards. Security standards and best practices. The addendum should specify the security standards and best practices that the third party agree to follow to protect against cyber threats such as encryption, access controls, and incident response protocols. This section may also include a requirement to perform and provide high-level results of penetration tests. Risk Allocation and Liability The addendum should address the allocation of risk and liability between the parties in the event of a data breach and or cybersecurity incident, including any limitations of liability. Auditing and Reporting The addendum should specify the procedures for auditing and reporting on cybersecurity measures and incidents, including the requirement to provide regular reports to the other party. A tip for ensuring your organization can review the third party on a regular cadence, more than once a year, 
is to include a right to review clause within the cybersecurity addendum and in addition to the right to audit clause, usually noted within the MSA. The right to audit clause is usually specific to internal audit and only allows TPRM practitioners to assess a third party once per year. A right to review clause can include language that allows you to send and receive responses for due diligence questionnaires, surveys, and evidence-based testing from time to time, instead of once per year. Your organization may also want to consider template agreements for offshore services to capture specific laws that will govern the relationship, primary language to be used, data privacy and protection requirements, and special dispute resolution circumstances if it is not practical to pursue legal action in a foreign country. To ensure that frequent risks identified in the due diligence process are properly addressed in contract clauses, TPRM practitioners should regularly discuss template updates with their organization's legal and procurement departments. Any additional updates required, potentially based on risk trends and emerging risks discovered, should be made during these meetings. Section 3. Negotiation Techniques In general, not all parts of a template agreement need to be negotiated with every third party involved in the agreement. Some parts of the agreement may be non-negotiable, such as provisions that are required by law or that reflect industry standards. These provisions may be included in the template agreement to ensure that they are consistent and legally binding. Other parts of the agreement may be negotiated, such as lower risk controls or sufficient control substitutions. It's important to review agreements carefully and identify which parts may be negotiated and which parts are non-negotiable. This can help to streamline the negotiation process and avoid unnecessary delays or disputes. Contract negotiations can be a key opportunity to secure favorable terms and protections for the organization. Third-party risk management teams can play an important role in contract negotiations by advocating for their organization's interests and ensuring that contract clauses align with their organization's expectations. Contract negotiation techniques depend on the risks that the third party presents to your organization, as well as the products and services they provide. TPRM practitioners need to consider the different scenarios of interactions with third parties to drive their negotiation approach. Examples of negotiation scenarios can include, but not be limited to, accommodating, approach should be collaborative and compromising, with an emphasis on preserving the relationship and finding mutually beneficial solutions. This strategy is great for lower inherent risk third parties. Collaborative, approach should be focused on finding mutually beneficial solutions. This strategy can be effective when the parties have a long-term relationship or when the negotiation involves complex issues. Compromising. Consider what the stakes are, if it is a higher risk versus low risk contract. This strategy is focused on finding a middle ground between the parties' positions and can be effective when the parties have equal bargaining power and a desire to reach an agreement quickly. Disengaged. Approach should be give and take. Focus on the issues that require additional negotiations but don't redline the easier clauses right up front. May need to focus on issues that are more difficult to negotiate by keeping clauses you know you are okay with from a redline perspective in your back pocket so they feel they've won on some clauses. Defensive, be more direct in your approach and know what you are or are not willing to negotiate on. Be clear about your expectations and why you're asking for something. Focus on protecting your position and minimizing losses by setting clear limits, maintaining a strong position, being risk averse, and seeking to maintain a positive relationship. Negotiation strategies can help practitioners achieve successful outcomes that are mutually beneficial. By understanding different negotiation techniques, Parties can choose the most appropriate strategy for their situation and increase the likelihood of achieving their goals. 
Strong negotiation techniques can include, but not be limited to, prepare thoroughly, before entering into negotiations, make sure you have all of the necessary information about the other party, their interests, and their bargaining power. This will enable you to understand their position and allow you to leverage your strengths. Define your objectives. Clearly define your objectives and understand what you want to achieve from the negotiation. This will help you stay focused and avoid getting sidetracked by irrelevant issues. Know your worth. Understand the value you bring to the table and the importance of the deal to the other party. This will also help you negotiate from a position of strength. Use anchoring. Use a high starting point in your negotiation to anchor the other party's expectations. This will create a reference point from which to negotiate. Use the power of silence. Use silence to your advantage during negotiations. Sometimes the other party may feel compelled to fill the silence by making concessions. Build relationships. Focus on building a relationship with the other party during negotiations. This can help to create trust and goodwill, which can then lead to a more successful outcome. Overall, the key to strong contract negotiation techniques is to be well prepared, stay focused on your objectives, and be willing to be flexible and creative in your approach. We hope you found this session of Third Party Risk Management 101 informative. Our next video will explore pre-contract due diligence, where we will dive into the inherent risk assessment as well as pre-contract due diligence activities. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more informative TPRM videos. Follow our socials to stay up to date on what's going on at the TPRA. Join TPRA as a practitioner member to gain access to even more awesome resources for program enhancement. Standard practitioner membership is free, so what are you waiting for?